Welcome to Second Take, I'm your host Jay, and today we have a very special guest, director of the web series Awkward Love, Emma Skelton. It's a pleasure to have you. Stay tuned. For people that don't know, could you just give a quick summary? Totally. Awkward Love is a, it's a web series that I've co-created and directed. It is about a girl who is heartbroken by none other than Dino Gorman. And now she is on the journey with her three best friends to find love again. Mm-hmm. And its tagline is finding love one awkward date at a time. We go a little bit further and use language that may not be allowed on a network television, themes that may not be allowed on a network television. So we, we really take the ball and, and run with it in terms of what we'd like to see and what we see as there being a, a hole in the industry. Right. And it's been received really well. It's on one of our major networks um, online yeah. divisions, which is a, um, sort of where, where they're heading at the moment. Um, which is called TVNZ On Demand, and it's finding a really good, good, uh, good group of people watching yeah. it there, and a good fan base. And we are about to embark on season two. Fantastic! So we are in the first season. We are following one character, and what it's like to go and get a, a wax, or what it's like to give someone uh, an awful sexual experience without going into detail. Um, in season two, we're taking it out of the house. We're going further. We're following all four girls and what it's like for them. We're following their careers. We're following their sexual exploits, their parties, and a few other surprises, which I'm still developing right now. I like that your fiance is in it. Congratulations, by Thank the way. Thank you very much. Thank um, you. I was watching this show, yes. and then I go, okay, so, oh, there's some Almighty Johnson cameos in there. That's yeah. great. That's yeah. nice. Well, the, the beautiful thing about the boys and Johnsons is they're like, yeah. Yeah. Like, I'll come along and have some fun. <laughs> That's you know, and the whole thing is my fiance Holly, they're her, they're her stories, yeah. which is horrible to think, but they're all a bit glorified. Um, so it's really made from us and put out into the world <laughs> for the, the judgment to come. How do you feel taking on the position of director? I think being an actor, in a sense, prepares you or has prepared me for being a director. I not only understand on set, but I also understand acting well enough that I can, as a director, speak to the actors in a, in a very um, personal way that gets the performances we need. So understanding it from both points of view really feeds in. And when I was doing Almighty Johnson's and, and any jobs that I do, I'm constantly asking questions from yeah. anyone in the crew because I want to know more. It's not that I want to do their job, but by knowing what they're doing, I might be able to make their job a bit easier when I do my job. You know, if a person's trying to set up a light and they need me to stand there, but maybe they're not saying it, if I'm asking questions and having conversation about it, I'm not going to step out of the light because I know what they're doing. Yeah. You know, so it's just kind of about creating that team team effort, and I'm just fucking curious all the time. I like that. <laughs> and it's definitely fed into being a director. That's a good answer, by the way. It's also very satisfying being a director because as an actor, you perform and then you leave it there. But as a director or a producer, which is what I'm, I'm doing both of those things, not only do I get to be part of the, the writing and all the way through to the performance on the day, yeah. but I also get to go into the editing suite and then continue to tell the story as best I can. It's, it's funny, we, I think as actors, we often consider, or some, I, I guess, I can't speak for everyone, but some consider performance to be everything. But it's amazing seeing the other side of things and how much the editing makes a difference, how much sound makes a difference, how much good sound makes a difference. Yeah. And, um, and then, you know, music and sound effects. We've got a fantastic team, a guy called Eni um, Benzinelli, who has actually worked for TVNZ. He was our editor, and he's got this great comedy about him. He's a, he's a European who has been over in New Zealand loving film and creating film, and he was a joy one to work with, and yeah. he... He loved jumping on board. And then this um, fantastic um, Foley artist, actually. She's also a sound designer, but a Foley artist by trade, I guess you call it, um, called Amy Barber, who, you know, like in that first episode of Awkward Love, the amount of sound she put in there that we never had, paper crumbling, water dripping, things like that, that just you don't realise how much the world's been brought to life until someone's done that to it, you know. (laughs) Um, and then our, um, Nina Wells, our DP, our, our camera operator and DP was just superb. She, uh, I think being a female, she also had found a lot of joy in what she was watching. So it, 
she'd almost get in the action rather than any kind of you know outside view. She'd be she'd be capturing just the right moments and rolling the camera a little longer than she needed to to get little <laughs> bits and pieces of reactions, things like that. In terms of production cost and mm -hmm. time, what's the difference between Almighty Johnson's and Awkward Love? It's gonna be major. Ooh, boy. Yeah. Almighty well, Johnson's was taxpayer funded in New Zealand. That's how our funding bodies work. You can get individual funding, but I mean, over the three seasons, it was probably $30 million. Um, whereas you might get that for half a season in the States, yeah. for example. Um, and that, so that's taxpayer money. How it works is you, you get a network behind you and then you apply for funding. And um, the first season was, what, 10 episodes, and I think we got about 7 million or, or so for that. And then it changes per, per season. Whereas Awkward Love, we wanted to create something and we wanted to create something then and there. Mm -hmm. we, we, we hadn't considered funding and we knew that we didn't really need to because we had enough interest and enough of a, a really passionate team on board that we could go forward with our plans because people loved what they were doing rather than doing it for the money. Um, we did have a small amount of budget. We had 5K for the first season, nice. which was funded through um, random films and then through a um, private investor, Martin Cooper, who believed in the product enough to help us, but also was interested in seeing where the, where the future might go for us as makers. And so in a sense, it was a, a semi-personal investment. And season two, I'm looking to create a much more professional environment, so we are seeking funding, we, we, we have got funding and we're getting more, um, in a way so that we can, I mean you have student films that pay 50 bucks and, and lunch or something like that, I'm interested in going a step further and making sure it's, as best as possible we can create a professional environment, yeah. because what that does is the bigger crew you have, the more you need everyone on site. And if it's people taking their time, they deserve, they deserve money or, or care of some kind to take, to take a bit of pressure off the yeah. fact that they've just left their, their comfortable bed or their <laughs> kids playing in the other room or whatever with the, with the wife, you know, or the husband. Yeah. So the fact that we can start to breed a sense of professional will only set us up in a great way for the future. Because um, we plan to make more, and we, we've got films in mind, and we've got um, network television series in mind. So it's just a good way to sort of progress the company and our own practices. Do you mean that awkward love could turn into a movie? Not necessarily awkward love turning into a movie. We pl we do plan to make three seasons of it, awesome. and each one getting even more production value, more episodes, longer length, more places. <laughs> we really want to because I live in um, LA a lot of the time, and. I've got it lined up to shoot there when we've got the budget as well. That's good. There's a few more restrictions in LA, but um, we have a few films, uh, thriller. Uh, there's a thriller film in mind that's based on one of our writers, Jess Sayers' plays. And we also have um, two TV series in mind, which are very early stages, so it's really <laughs> hard to talk about. What's next for you in terms of movies and TV? So straight after I shot Awkward Love, I did a short film that's about to go into festivals. I did an American TV series for AMC and a feature film that's gonna about to start in China and oh, wow. in July launch in China. So I've, for the last few months between um, writing and developing Awkward Love 2, I've been doing ADR in and out of the studio and working with the director on, on The Wonder 3D, that one's called, the Chinese film. So, I'm happily busy with my own projects, yeah. both as a producer and director, but also the, the acting side is very much humming along. So, I'd imagine sometime during the middle of the year I'll travel overseas again and carry on that momentum while my editor's working here and go with the flow. Yeah, it's a, it's a funny industry in that you, like anything, you um, are essentially applying for jobs and hoping you might get them. Whereas for New Zealand actors, you, you have a much smaller pool. So the fact that I'm, and, and a pool of acting, but also a pool of actors, so the fact that I'm creating my own work and, and our team are creating our own work, something very satisfying about it. Yeah. You know, breeding that attitude of not waiting for something to come, which I think is really important for, for creators. In, in the States, you have, um, if people aren't acting, they're doing classes. Mm -hmm. Whereas in New Zealand, if people aren't acting, they're doing their other job in a sense, and I see no reason why your other job couldn't be creating acting. 
They're creating opportunities for you and other actors, you know? <laughs> That's great. Well, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for coming to New Zealand, man. I loved it here. Beautiful. All right. Thank you.